The next major platform that we have to talk about in our software-defined networking journey is DNA Center. So by the end of this video, we'll know what SD access really is, how DNA Center fits in, and then the core components that make DNA Center work. Let's go. We're here to talk about DNA Center continuing our software-defined networking journey. And if this is your first time visiting this channel or if you're returning and you haven't subscribed yet, just hit that subscribe button and the little alert bell so that way you get alerted when new videos come available. All right, DNA Center and SD Access. What are we really talking about when we talk about DNA Center and SD Access? Here's how things are evolving. Think about it like this. What if we could attach networking policies to a person and that determines what they can access regardless of where they are? That's software defined access. Let's draw it out. Think about a college campus for a second. Maybe you work on that college campus uh, and this is your main building. You work in this building right here. And in that main building, you need to access data that lives on a server in the data center on that college campus. So we'll draw a little data center here and the campus. In the traditional way that this worked, your physical computer would be on a subnet that would be allowed networking access into that server. And then your user account would have to have the correct permissions to access the resources on that server, right? There's two components to it. First, there's the networking tier where you have to have the correct ACLs and routing in place in order to get to that server. And then you have your user account. What happens then if you leave the campus or that building and go to a library that's on campus as well? Now you're sitting here and in this traditional environment, sure, your user account follows you but does the networking follow you? Does the library give you access to the server that you need on the subnet that you need? Probably not, or maybe not. And that's where everything breaks down. You're not able to freely roam wherever you want in the campus and still access the server. That's what SD access looks to solve. Using a combination of underlay and overlay protocols, maybe something like OSPF on the underlay and VXLAN on the overlay, you can effectively roam where you want and you'll still have network connectivity to the data center thanks to the SD access fabric. That's this combination of overlay and underlay. And how does it know how to track you? How does it know that when you roam that you're still able to access these things, well, all of it is tied to your user account now. With DNA Center, we set up groups and endpoints. And effectively what we say is that people in a certain group are allowed to access other resources in a different group, regardless of where they are in the infrastructure. DNA Center then deploys all of these capabilities using your user account and the SD access fabric throughout your entire campus. Now you can roam wherever you want on campus, say to the library, and because routability throughout the LAN exists and your connectivity to your groups are made through the overlay protocol, you have access to all the resources that you need using DNA Center. How does it actually look on the front end, the DevNet sandbox to the rescue yet again? If I scroll down right here under Cisco DNA Center, well, they just upgraded this one to the newest version this week. Really cool. I'll click on the always on button right here and it takes me into the sandbox topology. You can see this is kind of how it works. It's got a few devices. It's got a couple servers that are acting as hosts and you can see how this is all managed from within the DNA Center. So if I scroll down over here on the left-hand side, you can see the link to sandboxdnac2.cisco.com. I'll get signed in with the creds. Success. This is the front end of DNA Center and it's broken down into what they call the four workflows. These four workflows are covered on the CBT Nuggets CCNP course that's coming to CBT Nuggets within the next couple months. The way it works is you begin by defining your de geographies within the design section. And you can see the design section covers a global campus. Drilling down deeper into these things like Area 1 in the US East or Chicago in the US, we can see the actual building layouts that would represent our campus building in the design. 
From there, we would go into policy and this is where we actually create our user accounts and determine who can access what other user accounts or endpoint groups. Our final configuration item is in provision and this is where we would attach devices to policies and sites and that deploys the entire SD access fabric. Finally, the assurance section is where we can go to monitor our overall campus health. This is monitoring on steroids because it uses machine learning to detect anomalies and make proactive adjustments to keep our environment healthy. I'd totally encourage you to dig into the DNA Center a little bit more, jump in that sandbox and click around, and definitely keep your eyes peeled for when the CCNP course comes available here on CBT Nuggets. Of course, we do have network automation stuff for DNA Center already up and running out there in the DevNet Associate course. But that gives you a feel for how the large enterprise campus is changing with SD Access and where DNA Center fits into the big picture. Thanks for stopping by, y'all.